Hi, I'm Brian Kazmerzak, a Battalion Chief of the Penn Township Fire Department in Mishawaka, Indiana, and a Director at Large with the International Society of Fire Service Instructors. During the past few years, the term flow path has entered the fire service vernacular. What we must all understand is flow path is not new and it occurs at every fire we respond to. We must recognize flow path and be deliberate about addressing it at every fire and need to make this part of tailboard critiques and after action reviews. James Redwood, superintendent of the London Fire Brigade stated in 1866, the door should be kept shut while water is being brought and the air excluded as much as possible as fire burns exactly in the proportion to the quantity of air which it receives. If you think about this quote, it makes total sense. Just think about building a fire in a wood burning stove or a fireplace and using the damper and the flue to control the draft. Also, while we have renamed Vent Inner Search to Vent Inner Isolate Search, most good instructors have taught us to close the door or control the flow path, even before we knew what it was called. Anytime we force the front door to make entry, take out a window or cut a vent hole, we are influencing the flow path. I remember being taught very early on in my career, maybe I was just lucky, I don't know, but uh, that opening the door was ventilation. Your ventilation began when you made entry into the building. All right, so I knew that. I didn't really know it. I didn't really understand it. I didn't really appreciate the extent of the potential impact. And now I do, because we're seeing that when you open up that door, there's, there's a read you can make. It's not just about the smoke is lifting and coming out the door. It's about the air track and the speed of the air track. And is that speed changing? Is it improving? Is it getting worse? And what does the timing mean? Is the biggest thing that I've gotten out of this is you appreciate how fast that one opening can affect the outcome of the fire. Right through fire school and into probation training, they always teach you that forcible entry is opening doors and ventilation is opening windows. We have to treat it as one and the same. Any opening in the box is considered ventilation and we have to be able to control those flow paths. Flow path has been a major factor in several line of duty death and serious firefighter injury cases. Probably the most famous of these cases being the Cherry Road Fire in Washington, D.C., which two firefighters were killed, or the most recent being case studies from San Francisco and Chicago, which were line of duty death reports recently released by NIST. Flow path is defined as the movement of heat and smoke from the higher pressure areas within the fire toward the lower pressure areas accessible by doors, window openings, and roof structures. Generally, unless the thermal layering is disturbed, hot air travels out on the top and cool air travels in on the bottom. Any operations conducted in an uncontrolled flow path without an attempt to limit the flow path could potentially place trapped occupants as well as firefighters at risk because of an increase in the movement of fire, heat, and smoke toward their position. The speed of the heat and smoke in the flow path has been measured at up to 15 miles per hour. You cannot outcrawl the flow path. You will become trapped in the hostile environment, sustaining serious injuries or even death. I really don't think we can overestimate the importance of slowing down our ventilation operations and speeding up our extinguishment operations. It seems to me that there's a segment of the fire service that's got their undies in a bunch about the location of the nozzle when you first open it up. And that's an important discussion and that's an important part of the research. But the bigger part of the research and the bigger part of the discussion needs to be controlling the ventilation and making sure that those things are truly coordinated. Um, this is a dance that has to be more finely tuned than ever before. We're letting too much air into these fires too quickly and we're not advancing our lines to the seat of the fire fast enough. Ventilation should be coordinated with fire attack. Any openings on the structure that provide an inlet for air are gonna spike the heat release rate. By the time we have hose lines in place, we should be ready to do our ventilation operation. When the glass breaks, water should be flowing. I think the shift needs to be towards where the engine officer is the one making the ventilation call with confirmation from the incident commander and other people on the fire ground. But that, that ventilation should not initiate independent of the decision of the engine officer making the attack to the seat of the fire. Controlling the flow path is a means of applying tactical ventilation on every fire ground. Too often, ventilation has become a one-way operation where we simply open the building as fast as possible. This can lead to the ventilation operation getting ahead of the suppression operation, which will result in uncontrolled fire growth. Tactically ventilating requires us to manage the airflow to and from the fire compartment in order to control and perhaps even suppress the fire as we move our lines into place for cooling and extinguishment. The first step of controlling the flow path after identifying the flow path involves controlling the door that is being used for fire attack. The door must be controlled and closed as much as possible to limit the amount of air entering into the fire environment. If the door is not controlled, 
There will be an increase in the heat release rate, thus making conditions more dangerous for the trapped occupants. There are basically two methods for controlling the flow path in the fire ground. Both involve changing traditional methods of immediate horizontal ventilation. Method one revolves completely around door control. A firefighter will either be assigned to door control or the door is kept shut while the hose line is advancing on the fire. Most forcible entry instructors advocate forcing the door to the fire and holding it closed or controlling it until the line is ready to enter. While this has been taught for a while now, it must become commonplace in the fire service. In the past, however, once entry was made, most firefighters would often leave and chalk open the door, thus influencing the flow path, something that most of us never realized we were doing. A lot of firefighters have heartburn over the door closing behind them. The Los Angeles County Fire Department has addressed this by placing a flashlight at the door to help ease the feeling by giving firefighters a marker with the light. One of the downfalls of this tactic is that it does require extra staffing or the use of a RIT team member to help control the door, thus taking them away from their normal assignment. Method two utilizes a fire resistant curtain that is hung in the entry doorway. These curtains are smoke blocking devices as they are called in Europe have been around for a while now, but have just entered the United States in the past couple of years. As a matter of fact, most fire apparatus in Europe carry them, and every positive pressure fan sold in Europe is delivered with a curtain due to the great work of Dr. Michael Reich. In addition, the insurance industry has found them so effective that they have been the main funding source for these curtains for the fire departments. While the curtains have not become mainstream yet in the U.S. Fire Service, they do provide a great solution to door control, flow path control issues we face. With this curtain, you do not need to dedicate extra staffing to control the door. Once the curtain is hung in place, which takes less than 10 seconds, it will stay there for the duration of the fire. The curtain will help the fire stay ventilation limited, which will limit the heat release rate and dangers to firefighters working in the flow path. In addition, the curtain is very easy to crawl under and less constrictive feeling than a shut door. Several U.S. fire instructors are working with curtain manufacturers to add safety items to the curtains such as LED lights or luminescent markings. We found our flow path control devices or smoke curtains to be very useful. We don't use them at every fire. If we can cool the fire down from an exterior position or quickly through the door, it's, it's not the first thing out of our toolbox. But if we go to an apartment building where we have a common stairwell, it's certainly the first thing we deploy. So it's been a great asset to us for controlling flow path in a variety of situations. No matter which method you choose, to control the flow path. If firefighters understand the flow path within a structure, they have an effective tool for reducing the risk to trapped occupants and for ensuring an effective fire attack. Examining line of duty deaths in incidents where multiple firefighters were burned has shown the speed and the hazard of thermal flows. Firefighters will see that it is important to conduct a good size up while coordinating ventilation and suppression tactics to control thermal flows. Like with any other tactic, we must realize every fire is different and no tactic is absolute. We have a lot of tools in the toolbox and we need to be able to quickly distinguish which tactics we're going to use to address the situation. From the training burns in South Bend, Indiana, stay safe and remember through the combination of science and thinking firefighters, we will make the fire service safer for all of us.